الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله we reach the second nullifier of faith in the treaties نواقد الإسلام or ناقد الإس نواقد الإسلام the nullifiers of Islam the second ناقد إمام محمد بن عبد الوهاب رحمه الله تعالى says من جعل بينه وبين الله وصائت يدعوهم ويسألهم الشفاعة وتوكل عليهم كفر إجماع إمام محمد بن عبد الوهاب رحمه الله تعالى says whoever seeks intercession between himself and the law and supplicates to them and asks them and relies totally upon them has committed apostasy by consensus. So that means that the person who sets up some sort of intercession between his self or herself and Allah Azza wa Jal as far as ibadah that this is shirk and with regards to this to us uh, this um, setting up inter intercessors we'll talk much more in detail about some of these issues in the various types of intercession so the imam said so that they make between themselves and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, someone or something to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because that's the, the whole purpose of someone taking someone else or something else as a wasa'it is to bring them closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and during the time of Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala what was very common in practice with a lot of the people, a lot of the Sufis, uh, the extreme people of Tasawwuf, is that they would uh, make tawassal uh, on the dead, with the dead, their dead saints, for example. They would have certain graves and certain uh, people who were known either to be righteous or they might not have even been righteous people, but the people may have held them as uh, righteous salih, uh, uh, salih, or from the salihin, from the, the, the righteous people, or the saints, and they would either sacrifice on their graves, uh, you know, sacrifice an animal, uh, you know, and they would seek intercession from these individuals. These individuals are dead, and these individuals were unable, of course, the dead are unable to provide our needs and to give us sustenance and to help us with any of our difficulties that we face. So this was a common practice during the time of Muhammad ibn al Wahhab here in the Arab Peninsula uh, that many of the people, unfortunately, even though they said La ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammad Rasulullah, so they bore witness that there was only one God worthy of worship, who was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the last prophet and messenger, alayhi salatu wa salam, they said this on their tongues. But this action of seeking intercession from the dead and from those who are unable to fulfill their needs was an act of shirk which negated the shahada. It negated their shahada. It negated their tawheed. It negated their iman and their Islam. So it's very important for us to have that uh, that understanding, and it seems difficult for us, many of us uh, in the West, <coughs> who have not experienced that type of shirk, except for perhaps in the Christian Church or from the Catholics. We know that they they seek intercession from their priests, and the, and often even from their priest uh, preachers that they will go and they'll confess their sins seeking this is a, a wasila this is a wasait this is a means 
that they believe to come closer to Allah. They believe that the priest has a much more honorable position, is free from sins or freer from sins, and that they are not worthy of going directly to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so they seek this intercession to this uh, this intercession from the priest to deliver their repentance and to uh, have their needs met. And so this is shirk al-akbar. This is the major shirk. This isn't like the situation where someone asks someone who is righteous to pray uh, pray for them. Can you, Brother, can you please supplicate for me? I'm having a lot of difficulty uh, in my life. I, I'm looking for a job and I'm having so much uh, trials and tribulations, can you please pray for me? That is different than seeking, that is a permissible type of uh, uh, wasila, you could say, or a permissible type of tawassal, and we'll, we'll talk more about that very shortly. Uh, Sheikh, <coughs> Sheikh Abdurrahman ibn Saleh al-Muhyiddin, Allah Ta'ala, one of our mashayikh from Medina, he mentions about wasa'it, he said, uh, al wasita, you know, that to have this wasita, this um, something between you and, and something else. He said, he says, Hiya ma yakun bayna shay'ain, wa yatawassal biha bayna amrain, hadi hi hiya wasita, wa kada to summi or to summa al wasila, wa hiya qurba, alati to qarab. بين شيئين أيضا ووسائل ووسائط كثيرة وبعضها مباح وجائز وبعضها واجب وبعضها محرم وقد يكون شركا وعياذا بالله كما سنرى بعون الله وتوفيقه. So the Sheikh mentioned, which is very beneficial for us because it gives us uh, an understanding of these terms, especially in Arabic, and now we're going to do our best to translate them. He said, uh, al was uh, al wasata al means uh, to be, uh, to have something in the middle. And from this term wasata, uh, you have the term uh, wasatiya. For example, uh, wasatiya, wasatiya meaning that uh, to be like in the middle, in the middle path, like they uh, often, uh, what you hear uh, in the Arab world, you hear that they say Islam uh, deen wasatiyah, okay? Meaning that it is a religion which is the middle path. And Ahl Sunnah is, is, uh, has wasatiyah. Ahl Sunnah takes the middle path between the extremist groups and those groups that uh, throw away the religion. So Ahl Sunnah, they have the wasat, uh, the, uh, they have wasatiyah, they're in the middle path. So the Sheikh said, Al Wasata, that it is uh, between two things. Meaning, uh, Al Wasata, it means to be in the middle of two things. And to, to seek, um, to achieve something, is uh, uh, or, or or to come closer to something is between two things, and he said this is wasata. That this is what it means to be wasata. So it means to be in the middle. And he said likewise to seek a means a wasila, uh, and it is. And he defines what wasila is. He says wasila that this is qurba. That means it's seeking to draw near. And qurba they often uh, describe as, you know, uh, that this is uh, a type of ibadah as well. Qurba because we're seeking to draw nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Allah mentions in the Qur'an. And he says, وَهِيَ قُرْبَ لَتِي تُقَرَّ بَيْنَ شَيْئِنْ عَيْدًا So al-wasila, the term al-wasila, which is, uh, you could say, a means, it is qurba. It is also, it is seeking to draw near, to come closer uh, or uh, to, cl to come closer, to draw near to something between two things. Now, if we look at this in the context of what we're talking about, ibadah, al-qurba, when you make qurba to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that means you're seeking to draw nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're seeking to draw nearer to Allah 
subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that means you are on one end and you're seeking to come closer to your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you're seeking a means to do that. And then he says, al wasail wa wasait, you know, being in the middle, and this means, are many. He said, some of it is mubah. Mubah, ahabat <coughs> fillah, mubah, this refers to something that has no, uh, that is permissible. Mubah is permissible. For example, this laptop. This is an Apple laptop. This is permissible. Likewise, if I was eating an apple, that's mubah. That's permissible. That means that there is no ajr for using it, no reward for using it, and there is no punishment for leaving it. And likewise, there is no punishment for using it. So that means it's mubah. That means it's something it's permissible, but it, it, there's no reward attached to it. There's no hukum. The phone, my phone is mubah, but it 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 uh, you know there's no ajr attached to it in its asl, in its its origin. Now you can use this as a type of qurba. You can use this as a wasila, as a means. Right now we're using the laptop. I'm reading from. Uh, the nullifiers of faith, when I upload this uh, dars, this lecture, I'm using my camera, I'm using my laptop as a wasila, as a means, and I'm using it to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to be closer to Him. Ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. So then, this thing which is um, uh, in its nature, it is uh, mubah, it changes from mubah to, uh, to, you know, uh, mustahab, perhaps, that it is now, it is changed in its hukum, it, the ruling with this thing, it's now being used as a wasila, as a means to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do ibadah. So when you use it for that, you'll actually receive reward for using this wasila. Likewise, the person who uses their car, their car is mubah. But they're using their car to go to the nightclub. They're going to first pick their girlfriend up. Then they're going to go to the nightclub. All of that is muharram. And it is a wasila and a means to do haram. But if you use that same car to go to the masjid, to drop off your parents uh, with the intention to be rewarded from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be obedient to them, to take it to the store and buy some fruits and vegetables that you're going to give as sadaqah, whatever the case may be. You're using it for something lawful, and it's a means now to do lawful. So then, that car, in that sense, it takes a, a, a new ruling. It's went from mubah, where there's no reward and there's no punishment with regards to it, and now it is a means of qurba. It's a means of coming closer to Allah Azza wa Jal. And it takes a different hukum as far as the usul when we talk about uh, usul of fiqh. Uh, and, and this brings up a qaida and I don't want to get too far off topic, but uh, a very important principle which is called, uh, which is al wasila laha ahkam al maqasid. Al wasila laha ahkam al maqasid. Which means the means of something takes the ruling as its ends. But we have to be careful. Of course, that doesn't mean that we can use something haram to do and to, just to try to achieve. It doesn't mean by any means necessary. That's the point. And so, so now we're talking about when we talked about the phone, we talked about these things. These are things that are aslan, they're mubah, they're lawful to use. And so now we've used these lawful things to achieve a righteous ending. So then they've went from being mubah to now they've taken where you receive reward for them. But if you use something muharram, for example, look at the tekfiri groups, these extremist groups, ISIS for example, they say they're building a khalifa, they say they're doing uh, uh, building an Islamic state and all these things which are righteous endeavors but they're using an evil means to do so killing slaughtering terrorism torture rape pillaging all of these uh, wicked means 
to achieve supposedly a righteous end. So that does not uh, change the fact that is not what Islam calls to, so that is not what is meant by this principle. Likewise, the person who says they want to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is uh, back to the text, that they bring a something between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to seek to come nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they supplicate to them. And they ask them. So here the Shaykh is also specifying the type of wasila and wasayat which is muharram. Because as we mentioned, we just mentioned something that's mubah, we could use this as a means to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat> but if you are supplicating to the dead who cannot help you, supplicating to anyone, making dua, oh, Abdul Qadir Jailani, help me. Oh, so and so, the, the, the Sheikh of the Diobandi Tariqa or the Naqshabandi Tariqa or all the various Turq, Turq that uh, the, the Ahl Tasawwuf have or whatever, this is not going to benefit you and it's only going to hurt you because now it's sin and it is shirk. Shirk al Akbar, which takes you out of the fold of Islam. Kufr al Akbar, which takes you out of the fold of Islam. And that's why it's a naqid from the Nawaqid al-Islam. That's why it is a means of nullifying a person's faith. <clears throat> and this, and as the Shaykh mentioned, and he said, ha, uh, and the person who has done this has committed apostasy by consensus, by consensus, ijma'in, meaning that the, the scholars uh, are unanimous in agreement, the so scholars of Ahl Sunnah are unanimous in agreement that this is uh, disbelief that takes a person out of the fold of Islam. You can't supplicate to the dead. You can't supplicate uh, to anyone except the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, the Shaykh also mentioned another uh, benefit <clears throat> and he said that uh, he said and as far as itiqad or aqidah he said وَهُوَ إِنْ يَجْعَلَ الْعَبْدِ بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَ رَبِّهِ وَصَائِدِ وَرَبْ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ نَفْسِهِ أَلَتِي بَيْنَ جَنَبَيْهِ وَهَذَا هُوَ الَّذِي يُحْبَتُ عَمَلْ وَصَاهِبَ الضَّالْ مُذِلْ So the Shaykh also mentions, he said, uh, with regards to Aqidah and Creed, that uh, this, when it becomes shirk, uh, and this is, and, and using this wasa'it or a wasa'il or a means, it is when a, a servant uh, takes between him and his Lord some sort of means and the fact is that your Lord uh, is closer to you than you are to your own self. And this is what negates uh, a person's amal, their deeds. And the person who does it is misguided and they misguide others. And then he says <coughs> that uh, Shaykh uh, al-Islam Muhammad ibn al-Wahhab when he was mentioning, as we, we just mentioned, when he said whoever seeks intercession between himself and Allah and supplicates to them and asks them and relies totally upon them has committed apostasy by consensus, he says, هَهُنَا الْوَسَائِتْ وَوَسَائِلَ الْمُحَرَّمَ وَهِيَ الشِّرْكِ بِعَيْنِهِ حَيْثَ ذَكْرَ وَصَائِكَ الْمُحَرَّمَةِ فَقَالْ يَدْعُوهُمْ أَيْ يُنَادِيهِمْ وَيَسْأَلَهُمْ So he mentioned that this wasaid, this wasila, these means, this, uh, <coughs> this, uh, th these means of seeking to come closer uh, are, are the muharram kind, as we mentioned, are impermissible. Uh, and he said, and they exactly shirk. This is exactly shirk. This is the uh, major shirk, which no one should be in doubt about. Because for us who left Christianity to come to Islam, we know that for many people were dissatisfied because they saw that, hey, why are we saying God, we praise God, but yet we are praying to Jesus, alayhi salatu wasalam. And why do we have to accept him as the son of God? You know what, this, these concepts 
seems strange to us. And that, that was my situation. And why? Because they are seeking a wasila, a wasa'it between them and Allah They are supplicating. Even if they say, you hear uh, many Christians, they say all day, God, God, oh God is good, God this, he's blessed me, God has blessed me and favored me. And then in the smallest thing, they'll say, oh Jesus. Or they'll just, uh, they'll supplicate to Jesus. Or they'll call on Jesus or ask Jesus, whatever the case may be, but it's all ibadah, it's all shirk al-akbar. And so this is a, a difficult thing for us sometimes to perceive that how did the Muslims go so far away from the religion that they began to make shirk al-akbar? When it's the religion of Tawheed, you think it's clear, it's khalis, it's clear and pure and sincerity to Allah But yet the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam all over the Muslim world You'll find even today uh, in, in villages everywhere. If you go to Indonesia, if you go to Egypt, if you go, it doesn't matter, all over the continent of Africa. In fact, in almost every Muslim country except Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia does not allow that. But Yemen, you find it. Uh, all, all over, you'll find graves and masajid, all kind of uh, shirkiyat and bid'ah that takes place where the people are seeking to draw nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they say we don't worship them but we seek to draw nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is what the original mushrikeen uh, mentioned la uh, yuqarrabuna they, they, I can't think of the ayah but it means that we only seek to draw nearer to uh, to the, we only seek to draw nearer to Allah through them, basically that they were seeking intercession from their uh, from the statues, from the, the 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 various gods that they had in the Kaaba, these idols that they worshipped. They used them. They didn't believe that those idols, in and of themselves, were Allah, or were. But they used those idols as shifa, as a means, and that's where. The original pagans, pagan Arabs, and probably pagans in many various communities where they were far astray because they actually believe in the Rububiyah, the lordship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they sought to draw nearer through these idols in which, and that, that was worship. They did not define that as worship. And this is where you find the extreme Sufis of today is they will argue with you. They'll say, no, we don't worship them. We don't worship, I don't worship my dead, uh, these saints. I don't worship, uh, 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 you know, my sheikh and, and call, just because I supplicate to him. But I'm asking, he's a means to draw nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because I'm unworthy, because I'm, I, I'm a sinner, and so on and so forth. But this is shirk exactly. And how we know this, because the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, a dua hu ibadah. And the, and the ayat that are kathra about this, about supplicating to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that this is shirk al-akbar, this takes you out of the fold of Islam, and it is uh, what we must avoid. The shaykh mentions, with regards to this, he mentions the ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, fi kitab al-kareem, وَمَنْ أَضَلُّ وَمَنْ أَضَلُّ مِمَّنْ يَدْعُوا مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ مَنْ لَا يَسْتَجِيبَ لَهُ إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ وَهُمْ عَنْ دُعَائِهِمْ غَافِلُونَ uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Ahqaf uh, verse uh, 5 He says, And who is more astray? Who is more astray than the one who supplicates to other than Allah? To, 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 to those who are unable to answer Him. Uh, uh, and this is all the way until ila yom al qiyamah to yom al qiyamah and they themselves are unaware of their supplications subhanallah that right there that's a, a an ayah uh, quraniyah nas quraniyah a text that's very clear you know Allah describes those who supplicate and are unable to answer your suppl those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes those people who supplicate to other than Him that they are supplicating to someone who cannot answer their prayers. 
who is unable and will be unable until the day of judgment to be able to us uh, to answer their supplications and he describes them as being misguided and being the most misguided woman abalu and who is the most misguided who is more misguided than these people no one uh, those who supplicate to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and as we mentioned the Prophet والسلام, said ibadah. that supplication is worship and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and verily the houses of worship are for Allah and do not supplicate to other than Allah, with Allah, anyone. Do not supplicate to anyone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes clear, He's commanding us, He's prohibiting us, in fact. He said, Do not supplicate. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is prohibiting something. And remember this important qaida that whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibits something in the Quran that means it's Muharram that just that's very clear it should be very clear so and, and the Qaeda is the 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 rule is that uh, An-Nahi you feed a Tahrim An-Nahi you feed a Tahrim that uh, so when something is prohibited it, it shows that it is Muharram. And the opposite of that, which is also the, the, the other part of the Qaeda, Al Amr Yufid al Wujub. That whenever there's a command in the Quran or in the Sunnah of the Prophet, ﷺ, the asl or the origin of that command is that it's an obligation. If Allah commands you with Salat, you don't debate is this uh, wajib? Is it mustahab? Is it recommended? What? No. You, 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 the commands, the origin of the commands is that it's an obligation. You must do it. Okay? Unless there's other dalil from the Sharia to show us otherwise, that it's not uh, wajib, but it's mustahab. But this is outside of our, the scope of our, our studies right now. But we just want to understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is prohibiting what? He's prohibiting dua to other than Him. He's prohibiting shirk. And He's letting us know that the, the masajid, uh, and masjid in its origin it's referring to a place of worship we you know these are houses of worship they are built in order for people to congregate and worship Allah inside of them Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab al kareem qul qul ad'u qul qul ad'u qul ad'u alladhina za'amtum مِن دُونِهِ فَلَا يَمْلِكُونَ كَشْفَ الضُّرِّ عَنْكُمْ وَلَا تَحْوِيلًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that uh, and this was an address to the Prophet in Surah Al-Isra verse 56 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says say uh, they uh, they supplicate to other, uh, they supplicate to those uh, as as they as you claim to other than him, meaning other than Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, uh, and they do not possess anything to be able to remove the harm, uh, your to remove your harm, and nor to even. Uh, to even change the harm or change the situation. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is letting us know that supplication is only to Him and that it is uh, futile to supplicate to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no benefit for you because those who you supplicate to are unable to help you even if you supplicate to Jesus alayhi salatu wasalam, even if you supplicate to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam even if you supplicate to Jibreel the angels because we're not ordered to do that they do not have any ability except what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them from ability and gave them from ability no one can help you 
in your life situation, um, accept the lies of Ajel as far as ibadah and supplication. That does not mean, that does not negate the permissibility of ask calling someone on the phone or someone who's in the next room to be able to help you. Can you bring me some water? Can you help me? The room's on fire. What, whatever the case may be. They can help you on those things that they are able to fulfill. But however, me being here in Saudi Arabia, so now raising my hands, asking my mother, who's alive, may Allah guide us in her, and to supplicate to my mother now, or, or even if it's not in the form of supplication, but I, uh, I call her on the phone even, and I say, Mom, uh, you know, I need, uh, um, you know, I, I need a, a lot of wealth. I need a new job. I need, um, you know, I need you to, to increase my risk right now. I need you to provide more substance to me. She can't do anything. She can go to Western Union and try to send some money, but she does not have the power to change my condition. This is only with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So those things which someone else is unable to fulfill, it's clear that they're unable to fulfill. For example, if you supplicate to the dead, I supplicate to my father, supplicate to whoever, uh, asking for him to save me from the hellfire, asking for him to increase my rules. This is shirk al-akbar. He's unable to fulfill that. So this is from... Uh, ignorance because he is unable to fulfill that he is unable to hear that and this is shirk and I hope that's clear ta'ala then the Shaykh he mentions the, some of the permissible types of seeking a, a means the mishru, uh, the mishru'iya or the the al wasait or wasail mashru'a. These are means of coming closer to Allah that are permissible. And he said, for example, one, وَذَلِكَ كَأَنْ يَسْأَلَ اللَّهِ بِجَاهِ بِجَاهِ Or this is, here, the Shaykh here is mentioning actually the misguided types of 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 wasa'it uh, or seeking a, a a type of intercession, if you will, and this is bid'a. This one is not. Uh, the scholars do not c call this uh, shirk al akbar, which takes you out of the fold of Islam. But this is a bid'a. This is a sinful act. And he mentions, for example, those people because this is common among some of the Sufis, Sufi sects that they ask Allah by the Jah of the Salihin. The Jah meaning the status of the, the righteous people. So by the status of the, the prophets, alayhim salatu salam, they supplicate by the Jah, by the status of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, please give me this or that and the other. This is impermissible or seeking forgiveness in this mean. You know, by the jah of your prophet, by the status of your prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, uh, please forgive me. This is bid'ah. This is not anything that we have from the Sahaba, the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wasalam, the Tabi'een, or those after them from the four Imams. Imam, who are the four Imams? Imam Malik, uh, I mean Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik, Imam Shafi'i, and Imam Ahmed, rahimahumullah, jami'in. So we don't have anything from the Salaf to authenticate this practice, which is a bid'ah, a practice of bid'ah, not from the religion. Uh, and you find this, as we mentioned, among some of the Sufi groups and others, is that they, uh, they do this practice and they claim that they're seeking close to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that they're coming closer to Allah and that they love Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They say this is the reason we, why we do it. The Sheikh mentions. He says, "Women men, women Mustafa sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Wala shakka anna anna min tamam al muhabba wa adhmaha mutabaatihi sallallahu alaihi wasallam haqq mutabaa." كما قال تعالى كل إن كنتم تحبون الله فاتبعوني يحببكم الله. 
the Sheikh mentions that some of the Sufis that you find many from amongst them they claim they love Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the Sheikh says but no doubt that from the proof or evidence that someone loves Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam of complete love is that they follow him so the way that we show our love for Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is by emulating his sunnah by practicing the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and since the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam didn't engage in these activities and in fact prohibited these activities and made clear for us that uh, dua is ibadah is worship then to do that to make du dua to to practice those practice practices are innovations in the religion and if you're supplicating to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then this is shirk this is something that, that <coughs> negates uh, your faith and the shaykh said that the most complete way uh, is to follow the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu in, in totality and he said and this is in accordance with the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where Allah says uh, that, to ad address in the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa that he should say say if you love if you love Allah then follow me and Allah will love you so if you want to gain the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you follow the sunnah of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam, did not uh, uh, allow those practices or uh, condone those practices. And so then the Shaykh mentions that there's a difference between a tawassal uh, and tawassal here we're talking about um, uh, intercession, the uh, prohibit the the or not intercession. We're we're talking about uh, a means of worshiping and coming closer to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And he said, uh, "Atwasul Mashroor, the permissible tawassal, who a tawassal be asmaila wa sifati. The permissible tawassal is by the is by uh, using Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala's basically supplicating to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala's by His divine names and attributes." <clears throat> or by his by his divine names and attributes, and he says, "Kama qala jalla wa ala walillah al asma al husna fadhuhu biha." So uh, he says, and in proof for this is the statement of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, where Allah Tabaraka Taala says, "And to Allah belongs uh, the 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 best names, the righteous names, the divine names." So supplicate. Fid'uhu biha. So supplicate to him by them. So that means, you know, when you're seeking mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, O oh, most merciful one, O oh, beneficent, O oh, the most beneficent. You know, you're, you're supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala using those divine names and attributes of his to supplicate to him subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. This is a way of coming closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his divine names and attributes. And supplicate to the, using those those uh, divine names and attributes, which are munasib, which are useful for what you want. For example, if you want your rizq to be increased, you want Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to increase your wealth, then supplicate Ya Razak. You know, ask a Razak. You know, ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala by His divine name of a Razak, uh, asking Him to increase your rizq. Uh, and, and you know so, uh, and if you're asking for guidance, Ya Al Hadi, oh uh, the 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 one who guides, please give me guidance, Ya Rabbil Alameen, Ithna Surat Al Mustaqim, guide us to the straight path. The Sheikh also mentions from the permissible types of uh, Tawassal, seeking to come closer to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. He said. Uh, very important. So likewise is also by seeking, you can seek to draw nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by those righteous living people. By their asking them to make dua for you. This is very important because this is where Ahlul Sunnah differs with the uh, Ahlul Bid'ah and from those groups um, like the extreme Sufis. So, for example, they supplicate to the Salihin that are dead. Ahl-Sunnah says, La, we don't supplicate to anyone, but we can ask someone who's righteous, 
uh, a scholar, for example, Sheikh, please uh, pray pray for me because I'm just having a difficult time. Ask Allah to to make it, things easier for me. And of course, the best is praying for yourself, supplicating to yourself. But it's also permissible to seek from the living, righteous people to ask them to supplicate for you. That's okay. It's permissible. That's Joaz. Uh, Jaiz. <clears throat> but uh, of course, with the condition that they're living and they're present, uh, etc., that you know it's something they're able to do. If they can't fulfill it, then of course you can't. Uh, uh, it's impermissible to ask. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this regard. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Shura, uh, verse 26, uh, that, that those uh, who, uh, who do righteous deeds will be answered, meaning their supplications will be answered. Uh, and it will increase them in their fadl, in their greatness. So that you'll, be, you'll be increasing your benefit by supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or even if you supplicate on behalf of someone else, that uh, that Allah will, will grant them success or what, what have you, that this will increase you in your fadl. It doesn't take away from you. And then and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Well, kafirun lahum adabun shadeed. That those who disbelieve, they have a uh, a wicked, tremendous uh, torment or, or punishment. Wa iyadim billah. May Allah protect us uh, from that. I mean, and he said, uh, the last type of tawassal of, of seeking to draw near that is permissible. So we were talking about the tawassal mishroor, and I hope this is clear. And I'll try to recap uh, as we as we go. Uh, the tawassal mishroor that's permissible and, and, and beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that you also seeking to draw nearer <coughs> by doing righteous deeds. And all of this you'll find in the hadith of the cave where the individuals were in a cave. The rocks, the boulders had uh, come down and sealed the cave off and they they uh, you know, supplicated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and made tawassal by their righteous deeds. One individual spoke about the the fact that he refrained from Zina, the girl that was his relative or what have you or something. Uh, she, you know, he, he had liked her and he got the chance and he was going to commit uh, Zina. And while he was basically on top of her, she said, fear Allah. You know, and don't uh, break the seal, meaning don't uh, commit uh, zina with me, don't fornicate with me. Uh, and he feared Allah for he he feared Allah subhanahu wa taala. He did it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa taala. He refrained. So then he mentioned that in his supplication, "Oh Allah, I did this for your sake, and this helped to move the boulders." So this is the deal and evidence to show us that. Uh, by making to wassel, seeking to draw nearer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with your righteous deeds, by asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah, I did such and such for your sake. Please, please help me in this situation. Please forgive me. Please grant me guidance. Please increase my rizq. I did it for your sake, subhanahu. Please help me. So this is uh, permissible. So uh, by doing righteous deeds, this is one of the means of to wassel. So what are the, uh, right, the good types of to wassel we mentioned? Uh, one we mentioned was uh, this. So all of this is the tawassal mishroor, the permissible one. And this one of the types is to ask someone righteous to supplicate for you on your behalf. Uh, the the uh, another is to uh, supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa taala by His divine names and attributes. And the last one is to uh, su to uh, by doing righteous deeds, that this is also a means to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, and, and that we can make tawassal with our righteous deeds. 
As for the tawassal memnur, the 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 impermissible tawassal, uh, huwa tawassal bi dhuwat al makhlukin o bi haqqihim o bi ja'ihim ala Allahi o bi makanatihim o ghayra dhalika mimma yaj'aluhu al abd al wasail wa wasail bainahu wa bainah rabbihi bel al wasail wa wasail takhudu liman la ya'raf anka shay'an wa Allah jalla wa ala يعرف عنك كل شيء بل هو الذي خلقك وأنشأك. so the impermissible tawassul in general is described as seeking to draw nearer to Allah subhanahu wa taala by uh, using the creation of Allah subhanahu wa taala in and of itself. so for example, supplicating directly to someone. Uh, supplicating or asking uh, supplicating to the dead whatever the case may be all of these are the tawassal memnur or as we mentioned so those are forms of shirk or the major shirk but also seeking to even if you're supplicating to Allah but you say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the jah of your messenger by the status of your messenger all of these these are a type of bid'ah these are, so it's impermissible. Bid'ah is impermissible. Shirk and kufr are impermissible. Uh, so all of those muharram, regardless of whether they're just a, a bid'ah that you're still in the religion, but you've done a major sin, or they are major sins, which is like shirk and kufr, the, the greatest sins, they're all sin and they're all impermissible. And that's why they are to wassel, غير uh, مشروع or توصل ممنور. So the next point I want to make is to clarify <coughs> that this nullifier of uh, faith is uh, just some very important points with regards to this. And one of the points is that we have to realize this nullifier of faith is actually a specific example of shirk which is the false first nullifier. So going back to the first nullifier that we mentioned from the Nawakad Islam, the first Nawakad, <coughs> this, uh, this second Nawakad, which is whoever seeks intercession between himself and Allah and supplicates to them and asks them and relies totally upon them, has committed apostasy by consensus, that this is actually, as some of the scholars mentioned, it's, it's a type of shirk. So, the scholars, they mention a particular principle with regards to this, that Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Hab, he mentioned shirk in general in the first uh, naqad. And in the second naqad, or uh, nullifier of Islam, this is a situation in which mentioning a specific example from the general principle. The general principle is the impermissibility of shirk. That's a naqid of Islam. This second naqid is a specific example which falls under shirk. So in some senses, so some of the scholars mentioned that it's actually not a separate uh, nullifier of faith because it's, it falls under shirk. Shirk in general, whatever way the shirk happens, that uh, of associating a partner with Allah Azza wa Jal is impermissible and it's shirk and it takes you out of the fold of Islam if it's the major type of shirk. So this is a specific example and that specific, specific example is by supplicating or making uh, pure tawakkal on the creation and with regards to that tawakkal as we said countless times in many of our other le lectures uh, a tawakkal huwa i'timad al Allah wa fi'l asbab tawakkal means to rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fully wa fi'l asbab and making effort to achieve what you want for example if I sit in the masjid and I say, Ya Razak, please increase my rizq, please increase my rizq, please increase my rizq, 
and I don't have a job, and I don't try to get a, make any effort to actualize that, then this is not the tawakkul which is matlub, which is uh, something that we should strive to to do. But the the pure, uh, the better tawakkul, which is mishroor, is that we make an effort because the sunnah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that he rewards and gives assistance to those who help themselves and so therefore the correct way would be yes in the masjid and outside the masjid su supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Ya Razak please increase my risk and also at the same time striving to find employment striving to better my situation economically so that is the full tawakkul that i'timad ala Allah wa fi'l asbab you know uh, uh, relying solely on Allah and fi'l asbab how do we know what that means about uh, the reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what does that mean you know that that could be a very general uh, you know i'm relying on Allah and i'm relying on seeking uh, going to the internet uh, to to find a job or putting in applications or whatever what this means, this t when we refer to tawakkul and we're talking about ibadah, the scholars like Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah mention that this tawakkul, that this has to do with an issue of the heart. That when you tawakkul Allah, that means you're putting your total trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, it, that it's only being fulfilled. And this is what you see from the, from the mu'min. Because a lot of time, people who disbelieve or people who are weak they will put more emphasis in the efforts that they're doing. That doesn't mean we should make weak efforts. No, make your full 100%, be 100%, 110%. But put your trust that it's going to happen. That's a matter of the heart, your belief that it's going to be fulfilled in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, I can put in 1,000 applications to find employment. And I hit the ground every morning I'm up and until Maghrib and or whatever I'm going to different places looking for jobs talking to people striving my utmost I'm putting I'm doing it but I'm putting my heart in and trust the true heart the the trust that's found in the heart I'm putting that in Eliza with Jeff. I'm not putting it in the application or this guy or this woman giving me this job I hope that's clear be it ta'ala so what is meant by intercession here, in, in when uh, the Imam mentioned about intercession, he said, uh, what is meant by inter intercession here is taking an intercessor between a person and Allah by supplicating or seeking to come closer to Allah through another person or having strict reliance, as we mentioned, tawakkul, and belief, belief uh, in someone that they cannot fail and placing complete trust and faith in them. And that's the point is our complete trust is in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, someone can fail, no matter how beloved to you they are, your mother, your sister, your grandmother, whatever, your, your spouse, you want them to fulfill such and such deed or such and such need that you have, but they can, oh gosh, I forgot. Oh, uh, something came up. Oh, you know, or something totally out of their control. You know, an accident. May Allah protect us from that. Uh, or something, some trial or tribulation distracted them or kept them from fulfilling that trust. That's the point, is that's why our total trust, that which comes with belief in the heart, Iman, that heart is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah mentioned, he divided intercession into two categories, the prohibited and impermissible. And this is something we kind of already uh, discussed uh, about. Uh, he says, uh, the permissible type is seeking to follow the prophets and the angels as they set the best examples and convey the message of Islam. And whoever rejects this form of intercession is a disbeliever according to consensus. So it has to be restricted to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Also this entails seeking knowledge from scholars and their students. <clears throat> uh, 
uh, as a form of intercession to come closer to Allah and learn his religion. This is not, these are not the statements of Sheikh al-Islam and Taymiyyah, by the way. Uh, the point I wanted to mention with Sheikh al-Islam is he mentioned the two categories, prohibited and, 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 and the permissible type of, of uh, intercession. These other examples are examples that I'm giving from uh, lectures that I attended with some of the ulama. Okay, so one of these the types of uh, uh, of, of tawassal or of intercession that you can that uh, is permissible, and we don't usually think of it as a form of intercession, but it is a means of coming closer to Allah, and that is by seeking knowledge by talab al ilm. And as we mentioned before, the Salaf used to say, Talib al ilm Talib al-Jannah. That the, the Salaf used to say that seeking knowledge is seeking paradise. So, by seeking knowledge from the scholars and the students of knowledge, as a form of intercession to come closer to Allah Azza wa Jal, make your intention for the sake of Allah, that you're seeking to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to learn His deen. Come closer to Allah and learn His religion. This is a type of tawassal. This is a type of... I'm uh, sorry, this is a type of, uh, of intercession, seeking, this is something mishroor, to seek to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through ilm. He said, in addition, asking a righteous living person to pray for you uh, is permissible in the Sharia. However, seeking intercession from the dead or the prophets by praying to them or supplicating to them is shirk, as we mentioned. So one should not say, oh Muhammad, I seek your intercession with Allah, please ask Allah to increase my wealth. La. We can't say that. That's impermissible. And that is shirk. Shirk al-Akbar. The major shirk. The prohibited intercession is seeking to come closer to Allah by supplicating or praying to other than Allah. A seeking intercession by asking those who are totally unable to fulfill what is requested of them, whether they be living or dead. Allah says, And they worship other than Allah, those who which cannot harm nor benefit them, and say, those are our intercessors with the law. Allah described that as ibadah, as worship. And this is in Surah Al-Yunus, uh, verse 10, uh, uh, verse uh, 18. Shaykh Abdulaziz al-Raji, half of the Allah Ta'ala says about this, uh, he says, as for asking the living to forgive you of your sins, or save you from the hellfire, or to increase your wealth, or assist you against your enemy, or not to prohibit you from from paradise, then this is shirk, as he does not have control over these affairs. So that that's very clear. The Imam uh, Sheikh Abdulaziz Al Rajhi, half of the Allah Taala, one of our scholars in Riyadh, uh, he mentioned this great uh, benefit, and you can find that in his, his treatise uh, of his explanation of this book, uh, Nullifiers of Faith. So the conditions of shifa, this is very important. Uh, the last point I want to, last major point of this, uh, of this Naqid min Nawaqid al-Islam. Uh, with regards to uh, uh, to intercession, so the conditions for shifa, the conditions for this uh, for seeking intercession. Uh, number one, the first uh, condition for shifa for intercession is the permission for intercession comes from Allah alone. That's first and foremost. So the first condition is that it comes only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have to know it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's the only one who can give you, can 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 allow uh, intercession. The second condition for intercession is the person being interceded for must be a Muslim as Allah is only pleased with those who worship Him and Him alone. So it has to be uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's pleasure. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is only pleased with those who worship Him and Him alone. Uh, the evidence for these uh, two conditions is a statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where He said, How many from the angels in the heavens do not possess from intercession anything except after obtaining permission from Allah for whoever 
he wishes and is pleased with. And this is Surah, uh, Surah an uh verse 27. This verse here shows us those conditions there. Again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, How many from the angels in the heavens do not possess from intercession anything? Letting us know that the angels themselves don't possess intercession. Uh, except, ah, illa, except after obtaining permission. So the angels have to obtain permission from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. From Allah. So that's the first condition. For whoever he wishes and is pleased with. Ah, the second condition is that Allah is pleased with the one interceded for. So very important, those two, uh, uh, those two conditions for intercessions. The first, again, is being that the permission for intercession comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. The second is that uh, it has to be intercession is sought for the one who Allah is pleased with. No matter how much I want to, I cannot intercede upon, uh, and even I'm alive and seek and supplicate even on behalf of my dead relatives that uh, did not die in Islam. None of my relatives, uh, maybe some distant cousins and so forth, were, were Muslim. But almost no one in my family <coughs> is Muslim. So for me, I, I can't uh, supplicate on behalf, for example, of my father because he does not forget, fit the category of being a Muslim, a believer. He did not fit that category and of being of someone who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with. And so very important for us to have that, that understanding of these uh, important points. And we ask that Allah, the Almighty, accepts our good and forgives our evil and blesses us to be of those who rely upon him and be of the mutawakkilun. Ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. A last point I want to mention about tawakkul. As we mentioned, tawakkul of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this is relying upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone uh, and this is an act, this is a, the tawakkul that we're talking about is tawakkul in the heart, uh, by the limbs, your actions of, 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 of putting your trust by making efforts, this is permissible and actually something which is uh, desired in the sharia and uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says with regards to the tawakkul and the characteristics of the believers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Wallahi fa tawakkalu in kuntum mu'minin Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and upon Allah you should rely or trust fa tawakkalu Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used the t this is in the imperative form so here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding. And remember, a command means al amr yufidu wujub. A command uh, uh, for something means that it is an obligation. So it's it's wajib upon us to make tawakkul of Allah, to rely upon Allah. Because that's an act of ibadah. And all, all ibadah is, is worship. Uh, ibadah is worship. And uh, means worship. And so ibadah is those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. And it is those things we're commanded with. We're commanded to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And that's our divine purpose. I've not created mankind and jinn except for the purpose of worshiping me. Worship Allah alone and do not associate partners with him. So tawakkul is a type of is a type of uh, ibadah. And as we mentioned, itimad Allah wa fi'la asbab that it is relying solely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, putting your trust in your heart uh, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and taking actions in order to achieve whatever you're achieving. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that this, uh, this verse, uh, in this verse, that this is a characteristic of the mu'min. How do we know that? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَاللَّهِ فَتَوَكَّلُوا إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ Then on Allah, put your trust. Allah is commanding. Make your uh, put put trust in Allah, and then he said, "In kuntum mu'minin, if you are believers." So, if you want to fit this criterion, this status, this uh, characteristic, 
or this attribute of being a mu'min, then put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tawakkalah Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with tawfiq and bless us to be of the mutawakkaleen. Ameen. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitab al-kareem, Wa ala rabbihim yatawakkaloon. And this is in Surah Al-Anfal, the, the second uh, verse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And upon their Lord, they make tawakkal, they put their trust. So, this lets us know this is from the sifat of the mu'mineen and that uh, to make tawakkal in the form of ibadah to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is shirk and it falls under this naqid from the nawaqid of Islam and so beware of that and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam